<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. And in this video, we're going to be accomplishing something that many people dreamed of and thought would be impossible for a long time. And I'm very happy to see that be proven wrong here. But as of 2021, there is now something called Tony Hacks for the original PlayStation. This will allow us, once it is fully set up on the PlayStation, to safely and easily swap out an original game that we have set up for this and pop in either a backup game or an import game on an original PlayStation and play it with little to no issues. It has a lot of really awesome developments on it, it is consistently being maintained right now, and it does not require you to open up your original PlayStation, you do not have to block any sensors, you do not have to solder in any chips, nothing of the sort. There's just going to be a few things that you'll need that we're going to go over in the prerequisites. For this we will require a few things. Of course we are going to require an original PlayStation console, and before we get into that we need to cover which PlayStation consoles work. A lot of the information I will be covering and referencing is going to be on the TonyHacksOrca.pet page as well as the GitHub for Socrum8888, the developer behind this, and thank you very much for not only releasing this but maintaining it. But there are going to be several different pieces of information and downloads that you can check out here. So if you're needing something a little more specific for your situation or if you just need to see something in text, everything is going to be available on these pages linked in the description. Now first of all, you will need an original PlayStation console and not every PlayStation will work, which is why I do need to stress this here. So first of all, let's get the easy part out of the way. If you have a PAL original PlayStation, congratulations, it will work. This will work on the original PlayStation and the PS1 or the PlayStation Slim, whichever you want to call it. It works on any of those if you have a PAL console. If you have a NTSC U console, this works on every model except for the original model, which is the SCPH-1000. That's also the one that has the RCA jacks on the back with the yellow, white, and red ports. So if you have a PlayStation like that, which is NTSCU, it will not work for this. And finally, if you have a Japanese original PlayStation, unfortunately you are out of luck. This does not work on Japanese original PlayStations. So you have to have an NTSCU PlayStation that is newer than a SCPH-1000, or you have to have a PAL PlayStation to perform this. Now this is intended for the original PlayStation, but there have been several people who've been testing this with the PlayStation 2, and it seems to be your mileage may vary on this. For the PlayStation 2, it's the same issue with Japanese PlayStation 2s. Japanese PlayStation 2s do not work with this. However, it seems that PAL and NTSCU PlayStation 2s, which are 39,000 and lower, so that series, seem to work with this. Anything that is a 50,000 and higher is not going to work. So for example, the newer fat PlayStation 2s or even a slim PlayStation 2, they will not work with this. If you have a fat PlayStation 2, you can easily denote this by looking for the iLink port on the front of the PlayStation 2. If your PS2 is missing this iLink port, it is not going to be compatible with Tony Hacks. And if it does have the iLink port, it will work as long as it is PAL or NTSCU. Now that we have the hardware compatibility out of the way, let's talk about what we will need to accomplish this if you're going to follow along here. First of all, again, you will need a compatible PlayStation. I just went over which ones are compatible and which ones are not. You will need an original PlayStation memory card, and you are going to need an exploit game or an entry point game of your choice. Now at the moment, there are several more games that are being added. You can find them in the links down below for this project in the description. And of course, since this is called Tony Hacks, it is intended for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It will work on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, 3, and 4. However, as you can see from here, there's many other games that work, such as Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling, Cool Borders 4, Crash Bandicoot 2, and uh, a few more. So there's games that are on here that do work that you might already own, but even if you wait, there's probably going to be more games that will be added in the near future. You have to have an original copy of one of these games that works for the region your PlayStation is assigned to. So for this, even though I have five different games that are going to work for this, I'm going to be using Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 for this demonstration. Now even though I just 
went over how this does and does not work on the PlayStation 2. In my opinion here, using a modified PlayStation 2 is probably going to be the most accessible way of getting this transferred over for many people out there. I will not be covering in this video how to modify a PlayStation 2 or install anything such as OpenTuna, FunTuna, Fortuna, Free McBoot, Free Hard Drive Boot, but if you check out one of my other videos covering that subject, you should be able to get up to speed here. Regardless, if you would like to follow along with this, I would recommend using a PlayStation 2, which has an entry point into U-Launch Elf or W-Launch Elf. Again, that is pretty much just having a modified PlayStation 2 with anything from a mod chip to free McBoot to Fortuna, FunTuna, OpenTuna, really just a way of getting homebrew running on your PlayStation 2. We're going to be using that so we can transfer over the save to a PlayStation 1 memory card. And of course, for our last item, we are going to need a USB flash drive. We will be formatting this to FAT32, and we need to use this so we can transfer over our saves using the PlayStation 2 from our computer. With all of that out of the way now, I know that was a lot of information to kind of throw here all at once, but that is our laundry list of items that we're going to need, as well as the compatibility. We can actually get on to downloading these files and getting them transferred over. So for that, let's go ahead, take a USB flash drive and move over to our computer. Now for this, what you can do is click on the link to the Tony Hacks GitHub repository, and you can go down to the bottom and check out the README here, which goes through some information on this, as well as the games that you're going to need or you will be using. So let's get that out of the way first. First of all, we do need two saves. We're going to need the Tony Hacks SPL save, and we're also going to need our game save. And for this, we need to pick which game we will be using. This is game specific here. So as I'm going to be using Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, I'm going to be using the NTSCU version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, and this is going to be the file name that I will be looking for if we're going to be using this method here. So just keep that in mind. You might want to note that somewhere for your game, whether it could be, for example, the French copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, or it could be the PAL copy of Cool Borders 4. Just pick your game and find the file name that you are looking for. Next, we can go to the releases page, and here it's going to bring us to the latest release available. And one nice thing as well too, is there's always stuff that is being added to this. So for example, automatic anti-mod chip patching was just added in here. So for all these games, it should help with getting them up and running and working. Once you come over to this download page, you just want to download the latest Tony Hacks zip file somewhere you can easily find it. Now let's come over to our USB drive. For this, since our save files are going to be so incredibly small, we do not need to worry about having a large flash drive by any means. Uh, but for this, I do have a 16 gigabyte flash drive, but I recommend just grabbing the smallest flash drive you have. And it must be FAT or FAT32. You can check that on Windows by right-clicking it and going to Properties and seeing what file system is there. However, if your file system has not been formatted to that, you'll need to back up any data you care about from that flash drive, and you can just format it as such. Format, FAT32 is fine. It has to be FAT or FAT32. It can't be anything else. And then all the other defaults are fine. Quick format is fine. And that has been formatted without an issue. With our Tony Hacks zip file, you want to right click it and just extract it using whatever extraction software you're using into its own folder because there's going to be a lot of files that will extract. Now you can open up the Tony Hacks folder that was just created and there's going to be a whole mess of files right here. Now because we're going to be using the PlayStation 2, we're going to be using the files that are starting with a B, so like BA, BE, just files like this. Any that are .mcs files, we will not be using for the PlayStation 2. So like I said, referencing the GitHub page, there's going to be two files we'll need. The first one is going to be the Tony Hacks file, the raw file. So this is what we're going to be looking for, this B-E-S-L-E-M, whatever this is going to be called, we will need this file. I've already found it, so I'm just going to copy and paste it into my USB drive. Next up, again, we need to find our game, so make sure you have chosen your game. I'm going to use the NTSCU copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and this is the file name that I am looking for. So even if you don't want to read everything, you can just copy this out. You can paste it in the search function right here, and as you can see, it's sitting there. This is the file we need. So I'm going to copy this out, 
and paste that into our USB drive. And here we go, a whopping 16 kilobytes worth of files. So now with our save files copied over, I'm just going to right click, eject, and we're going to go over to our PlayStation 2. All right, now once we're over at the PlayStation 2, make sure your USB flash drive has been plugged in and we're going to need a couple of things. Of course, we're going to need our method of loading up a piece of homebrew. For this, I'll be using ulaunch elf and open tuna. We're also going to need our PlayStation 1 memory card plugged in, so be sure to plug both of those in if you haven't already. Now that you're all ready to go, launch ulaunch elf. For this, again, I'll be using open tuna. So, I'm just going to back out like that, and in a few seconds it should boot up ulaunch elf. And here we go. Now once you're here, press circle to open up the file browser. Now go down to mass and press circle. Your files should be showing up from your USB drive. So for this, you can press, just highlight one of the files, press X, and highlight the second file, press X. Now press the R1 button and press circle on copy. Now go up to the two dots and a slash, press circle. Go over to MC1, assuming this is where you have hooked up your PlayStation 1 memory card, and press circle. There should be some other saves there if you've been using this, and they should all look pretty similar. Now, as you can see, I have 56 kilobytes worth of free space on my memory card, and you'll want to make sure you have enough free space on your card. For this, I do need 16 kilobytes of free space. But once you have verified that, you want to highlight the two circles and a slash, Press R1 on your controller, and press circle to paste the two files. So now that is done. As you can see down here, we have Tony Hacks and we have our save game. So with all that done, we can turn off the PlayStation 2, unplug our PlayStation 1 memory card, and transfer over to the original PlayStation. Now once you fire up your PlayStation, you'll just want to put in your game of choice and make sure you do have the memory card plugged in and let it do its thing and just boot up like any normal game. And here we go, we are now in the main menu for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Now if you're using any of the Tony Hawk games such as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, 3, or 4, it's very simple. You just come down to Create Skater and you press the X button to load this. If you are following along and you are not using Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, well, you can check out the orca.pet slash Tony Hacks site, again linked down below in the description, and it's going to have usage here and it's going to show you how to launch this on every single game available. So you can follow along with these as well too. Really all you're needing to do is make sure that you can trigger that save game to load. And once you load up that game save, you'll be able to then enable Tony Hacks. Either way, going back to our game, I'm just going to press X on Create Skater and it is going to load up our save game here. You might have a few crazy colors and now, as you can see, it's going to bring up this text. So it's saying that we have unlocked the drive and we can swap our CD now. At this point, congratulations, you're in, you've done it. So you can now open up your disk tray, remove your game that you were using, and then pop in the game that you want to play, such as a backup game or an import game. For this, I am going to be using my imported copy of Persona 2 Innocent Sin. This is a Japanese game that is being booted on an American original PlayStation. So once you do this, it's just going to load up a few things here, just have some text, and we can wait a few seconds. And as you can see, the game is booting just fine. So it's as easy as that. Again, it seems really hard to believe. It seems like something that we have absolutely dreamed of having for anybody who really has a love for the original PlayStation, but that is all there is to it. This is a really great and clean way of doing it, especially if you don't want to open up your original PlayStation console, or you don't want to block any sensors, or you don't want to perform any swap tricks that might damage your laser or your spindle, or even both at that point. It's a very clean, and easy way to do this. Now one thing to keep in mind is that nothing on the actual PlayStation or the games is being modified. This is all on your memory card and you have to go through that process every single time. So every time you want to boot up a backup or imported copy, you must fire up the game of your choice that you have used for this. You 
have to load up your save and then you have to swap discs that way. It might be a little cumbersome for some, but I still think this is a really awesome development nonetheless, and it's a really clean way of doing this, again, without any sort of physical modifications or any swap tricks on the system. Now for our final part here, I'm also going to show you how to transfer the save over to other memory cards. That way, if you want to exploit other memory cards that you have, you don't have to go and dig up a PlayStation 2 and dig up a compatible memory card and a USB drive. This is assuming you're going to be using the same game though. So for this again, this will assume that I'm copying it to another memory card and I'm going to be using Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on that card. Simply put your second memory card that you want to copy everything over to in the second port of your PlayStation, go to the memory card setting, and wait for all your saves to load up. Now once they have loaded up here, you can just go down to copy, select the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 save or whichever save you have chosen, and we're going to say yes to copy file. And it's going to transfer over just like that to our second card. And the second thing we need is of course the Tony Hacks one. So Tony Hacks SPL, this is always needed. You just want to do the exact same thing to that. And there you go. You've been able to transfer over Tony Hacks to another memory card without utilizing a USB drive or the PS2 or what have you. Just do keep in mind if you're doing it with this method, the only games you'll be able to use are going to be the save games that you already have on hand. But there we go, that is all there is to this. I think this is one of the coolest things for the original PlayStation that we've seen nearly three decades after its release, and I do hope that it has some use for people out there who might not, again, want to do a swap trick where they have to really hot swap a spinning disc, or they don't want to install a chip in their PlayStation. But that's about it for this video. I do also want to give a final thank you and shout out yet again to Socrum8888 for developing, releasing, and maintaining this. This has been absolutely awesome. Anyways, that's about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. 